In this video, we're going to go over radical equations, part one, which is under also radical equations easy, on the Infinite Algebra 1 CUDA software website. The directions are to solve each equation, remember to check for extraneous solutions. For number one, we have the square root of x is equal to 10. So just as if we had x plus two equals 10, you subtract by two to get the x by itself. Or let's say, that we had x times 2, or 2x equals 10, you would divide by the 2 to get the x by itself. Same with subtraction, and then also division. But with radicals, we need to figure out how to isolate this x that's within this radical. The square root is canceled out or counteracted by squaring that radical. So in order to do this, we're going to square the square root of x, and whatever we do to the left, we do to the right. So we're going to square this 10. When you square a square root, it essentially counteracts it or cancels it out. So then we're left with x on the left, and then we have 10 squared on the right. So that's x is equal to 10 times 10, because 10 squared is 10 multiplied by itself. So that's x equals 100 for number one. Going on to number two, we have square root this time on the right. So we're going to square that square root, so that's all of this gets squared, and then the left hand side gets squared. That's going to be 100, since 10 squared is 100, is equal to m divided by 10, or m over 10. Then we just need to finish solving. We're going to multiply by 10 over 1, which is 10 to get that 1,000 is equal to m. In number 3, again, we're going to square the radical. So the entire radical is squared, and then on the right-hand side, this 3 is squared. So we're left with v minus 4 on the left is equal to 3 squared which is three times three, which equals nine on the right. Then we're going to add four to both sides to get that V is equal to a positive 13. On to number four, six equals the square root of V minus two. Squaring the radical and then squaring the left-hand side as well, because whatever we do to the right, we do to the left. 6 times 6 is 36, and that's going to equal v minus 2, since the exponent of 2 cancels out the square root. Then we're going to add 2 to both sides to get that 38 is the value for the variable v. Number 5, we have the square root of n equals 9, squaring both sides. We get that n is equal to 9 squared, which is 9 times 9, so n equals 81 for number 5. Number 6, 5 equals the square root of x plus 3. We're going to square both sides. 5 squared is 25. So on the left we have 25, and on the right we have the quantity x plus 3. When we subtract a 3, from both sides, we get that 22 is equivalent to x. For number seven, we have two equals the square root of four times b. Squaring the right and squaring the left, we'll get that four equals four b. Divide by four on each side, one is equal to b. So one is the answer for number seven. Number eight, we have the square root of n plus nine equals one. Again, we're gonna start by squaring both sides. We'll be left with n plus nine on the left and one on the right, since one squared is simply one. We're gonna subtract nine from both sides. We'll be left with n plus zero, which is n on the left, and one minus nine is going to give us negative eight on the right. For number nine, we have negative eight 
plus the square root of 5a minus 5 equals negative 3. This is a little different because now we have something outside of the radical on the left hand side. Just as we did with the absolute value or parentheses, we're going to want to move this negative 8 or remove it from the left hand side so that the radical is all by itself to start. Otherwise, you could also start by squaring this entire side, but the math gets a little messy, so let's go ahead and make it simple. Add 8 to both sides to start. That will leave us with the square root of 5a minus 5 equaling a positive 5 on the right. Now we can square both sides. That'll leave us with 5a minus 5 on the left and 5 squared is 25. Add 5 to both sides to get that 5a is equal to 30. Then all we have left to do is divide by 5. 5a divided by 5 is a. 30 divided by 5 is 6. Number 10, you can see that this 10 is outside the radical. So we're going to move it to the other side so that we can isolate the radical. Divide by 10. That'll leave us with the square root of 9x on the left and 60 divided by 10 is a 6 on the right. 6 divided by 1 is 6. Now we can square both sides. Doing this, we'll have 9x on the left and 6 times 6 is 36 on the right. Then we'll divide by 9 to get that x is equal to 4. Let's go ahead and finish out this first page. So we'll do two more problems. And as we're doing those, please go ahead and click the like button below this video and go ahead and subscribe to my channel as well. So our second to last problem in this video, number 11, nothing is outside of this radical, so we can start by squaring both sides. That'll be 1 equal to x minus 5. Add a 5 to both sides, and we'll get that 6 is equal to x for number 11. And our last problem, number 12. Negative 10 times the square root of v minus 10 equals negative 60. This negative 10 is outside of the radical, so we're going to deal with that first. And we're going to do that by dividing by a negative 10. Whatever we do to the left, we do to the right. So we're going to be left with the square root of v minus 10 on the left hand side, and that's going to be equal to a positive 6 on the right hand side. Now that the radical is isolated, we're going to go ahead and square it. So we'll have v minus 10 and that's going to be equal to 36. All we have to do next is to add by 10 on both sides. That will give us that v is equal to 46 for number 12. In the next video I'll continue on with numbers 13 through 19 and then finish out with numbers 20 through 26.